So once again, OpenAI has released some major updates. This includes the announcement of Deep Research, and this also includes the launch of O3 Mini. And instead of me making separate videos for each one, I wanted to compile this into one video. As a response to China's DeepSeek really shaking up the AI industry last week, OpenAI came through again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the important details that you need to know. I'm also gonna show you some real world examples. So be sure to stick around for the entire video. And if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Ryan and my mission is to help you navigate the overwhelming world of artificial intelligence. And if you wanna know my favorite AI tools and prompts that I'm using for marketing and content creation, be sure to get my free AI marketing essentials guide. You can find the link for this below this video. So first I wanna talk about deep research and this is OpenAI's new AI agent that can perform multi-step research tasks. This is their second official agent release after we saw Operator about a week or two ago. And in my opinion, this is one of the biggest updates I've ever seen from OpenAI. Now that's a bold claim after custom GPTs, Sora, all the other releases that they've had over the years. I've been testing deep research thoroughly in my pro account on ChatGPT, and I've been very impressed with the results that I've gotten. I'm gonna share this example with you here in a little bit, but I'd recommend visiting this page on OpenAI's website. I will leave a link to this and everything else that I mentioned in the video description below. They do have a quick little demo video here that's a minute long showing you what deep research looks like, but I'd also recommend visiting their X or Twitter account as they have a 20 minute walkthrough video with the team at OpenAI showing you some examples and just other important details about deep research that you should know. Now, another important thing to mention about deep research is number one, it is only available to users of ChatGPT Pro. They say that right here. That is the $200 a month plus plan. And that's unfortunate, right? But it will be coming to plus and team next. So the $20 a month tier, I highly doubt OpenAI is going to release deep research to free users. I hope they do, but I highly doubt that. Now they did run it through a bunch of tests here. They have some examples I'm going to go through here soon. They ran it through a test called humanity's last exam, and you can click off and read more about this, but long story short, Apparently it had a 26.6% accuracy compared to all of the other AI models listed here. So GPT-40 only scored about 3% on this test. OpenAI O3 Mini High, which I'm gonna talk about that as well here in this video, that scored 13%. So OpenAI Deep Research on this exam apparently is way more accurate than all of these other models. There's another benchmark here called Gaia. I don't really know how much uh, you know stock to put into these types of things, but it did perform very well on this benchmark as well. Now, what's also cool about this page is if you don't have a subscription to ChatGPT Pro, you can look at these examples and compare the results side by side of deep research to GPT-40. Whether it's business, medical, UX design, shopping, let's take a quick look at what this looks like. So in GPT-40, this is what the result would look like on a prompt related to UX design compare that same prompt to deep research and we scroll down here, you'll notice how much more in depth this answer is. And also at the very end, if I keep scrolling, it provides citations or references to where it got all of this information versus GPT-40, you don't get references or citations. So that's another cool feature here. So now let's head over to my ChatGPT Pro account and put this to the test. Right away, what you'll notice is an option for deep research. You have to click this in order to use it. And so I'm gonna prompt it with an ideation prompt. Basically, all I'm doing here is telling it, I run a YouTube channel involved in AI and marketing, do some research and tell me 10 video ideas that will move the needle and help grow subscribers on my channel. And so then it asked me for follow-up details. The more details that we can provide deep research, the better results that we're going to get. This isn't uncommon for anything research related. And so what I'm gonna do is I already have these answers ready to go. So it's asking me, do you focus on tools? Uh, what's the skill level of your audience? Do you prefer evergreen content, trending content? Are there any challenges? And so here I have the answer ready to go. And so once I provide that follow-up answer, it's gonna come back with this and then it's going to start the research process here shortly. So then it says starting research. And I'm gonna actually skip ahead until this process is complete. This takes anywhere from two to three minutes from my experience, sometimes longer. So I'm gonna skip ahead and wait till this is done. 
All right, so here's my response from Deep Research. And right away, this took about four minutes. And I said earlier, it's usually two to three minutes. I know it depends on the depth of your prompts and whatnot, but I was right around there for this example. It also provided 14 sources. And if I click this, it opens up a sidebar on the right where it has activity. So step-by-step, step, it's explaining through its entire research process, which I'm guessing they probably got this from DeepSeek. This is one of the best features that I like about DeepSeek is it kind of walks through almost like a human would if they were going through this process. They also have sources on the right as well. So you'll see here it lists all the citations kind of in order. And on the bottom, they also just have a giant list of the sources. If you want to click off, it could goes to a new tab, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm going to X out of this and let's actually look at the response that it provided. So I'm asking for video ideas related to my YouTube channel that will kind of move the needle, so to say. So number one, ChatGPT Content Creation Masterclass. That's a good idea. And so what I like about this as well is it's having all these citations within the response on where it got these answers. So it talks about the tool reaching 100 million users. Got that from Reuters. If I click that, it goes off to the website. Uh, so it talks about 89% of marketers say they use generative AI tools. It pulled that from this citation. So I really like how it's pulling in these citations and actually including them right in the body of the response. ChatGPT versus Claude versus Perplexity, best AI tool for content. I like that answer as well. AI powered content strategy, mastering AI prompt engineering, five creative AI use cases, yada, 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 right? All of these are really good ideas. And I can obviously follow up and ask it for even more ideas or whatever other follow up prompts that I have. But I just want to give you guys a basic overview of what a response looks like for a real world example in my use case of deep research. Now, another great use case for deep research is traveling, right? So I'm traveling to Thailand actually towards the fall of this year for my honeymoon. That's the plan anyways. And so this would be another great way to use deep research. I said, I'm traveling to Thailand from the US in November. Research three things I must do when I'm there and any other travel tips. And then it came back and asked for more specifics. So I gave it that. And it says unique outdoor and food experiences in Bangkok and Chiang Mai. Cycle through uh, Bangkok's green lungs. And then it has all these different sources here. Tips for the best experience. Go early and stay hydrated. Uh, weekend market delights. Getting there, enjoying the slow pace. Uh, waterfalls, right? That'd be really cool. Uh, take a cooking class with a local market tour. And it has sources that kind of link off to that as well. And all of this other information, traveling tips for visiting Thailand, visa requirements and entry rules, uh, currency and money exchange, local customs and etiquette, uh, but basically all good information that I probably need to know if I've never been, been to Thailand before, excuse me. Um, so again, this is really in depth and just another solid use case of using a tool like Deep Research is for travel related prompts. Now, one final important detail I did forget to mention about Deep Research is that it is powered by a version of OpenAI 03. Notice how they didn't say 03 Mini, 03 Mini High. I would assume that this is the official 03 version or one that they're working on in development right now that's not available to the public. It says it's optimized for web browsing, Python analysis, uh, intelligently extensively browse text images and PDFs across the internet. So that's a very important point that I wanted to make before I dive into the next update. Now, the other major update coming out of OpenAI is the release of a brand new reasoning model called O3 Mini. And this does come in two variations. There's O3 Mini right here on the dropdown, and there's also O3 Mini High. Now, from what I understand is that this one is very specialized. O3 Mini High is best at coding and logic, whereas O3 Mini is just better for advanced reasoning. Now, why is this an important update? Well, according to OpenAI, this is the first time a reasoning model has been available to free users. Again, a response to DeepSeek as they launched R1, which is an advanced reasoning model to free users as well. It says, starting today, free users can try OpenAI 03 Mini by selecting Reason in the Message Composer to generate a response. And I actually created a free account just so I could see this. I don't remember the last time I was using a free account of ChatGPT, but right here is that Reason option. So according to OpenAI, if you use Reason, you get access to 03 Mini. Now, when it comes to usage, 
I'm not sure how many messages a day that you get. My hunch is that probably not a lot, just that's what they've been doing with the free users for quite some time now, but you do get access to O3 Mini on the free plan of ChatGPT, which is pretty remarkable. It says this is the first time a reasoning model has ever been made available to free users of ChatGPT. And if we look at some of the benchmarks here, you'll see how high this O3 mini model is scoring on various categories like math, coding, science, other reasoning, et cetera. Always take benchmarks with a grain of salt. I say this every time I cover this, obviously they're gonna promote their models on whatever website that you're on. So right here, O3 mini high is outperforming O1 and all the other O1 variations that OpenAI has. Same with PhD level science questions. O3 mini high scored a 79.7 compared to O1 78. O1 preview did better than O1 in this category. That's interesting there. Um, there's some other benchmarks here. Competition code, O3 mini high is scoring better than all the other reasoning models that OpenAI has. I'm surprised they didn't try to compare this to DeepSeek's R1 model, um, but you guys can scroll through this on this page. Again, I will leave this and all the other pages that I mentioned in the video description below. So I'm going to be honest with you guys, I haven't had a lot of time to thoroughly test O3 Mini or O3 Mini High, but a good video idea for the future might be comparing O3 Mini to DeepSeek's R1 based on how much you guys like my O1 to DeepSeek's R1 comparison. But I did run a few simple prompts, how many R's were in the word refrigerator, so it said four right here, there are four occurrences and it did get that correct, but if I come up and do something a little more advanced, let's. I just want to go through real time what this looks like if you haven't used it yet. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask O3 mini, I'm going to provide it a transcript of one of my long YouTube videos and just say, analyze the video and come up with five 30 to 60 second short clips that have the best chance of going viral online, provide the timestamps and also a catchy title for each one. So I'm going to go ahead and click enter. And then I'm going to skip ahead once this is complete. All right, so here are the results that I got from O3 Mini, and this took 37 seconds. And if I click this, it explains really step-by-step -step exactly what its thoughts were as it was going through this prompt. It says, okay, there's a lot here. I like how it does that. It almost talks like a human. I've got to go through this transcript, which is about 28 minutes long. Let's figure out which one of these moments might work for viral clips. I see multiple interesting segments. I'm considering this one, that one. I just like how it lays out all of this reasoning right here to go back and you can see exactly what it did. And so then here's what it provided. Welcome to the AI rabbit holes, rethink your routine, the AI job revolution, automate your YouTube, uh, 600 pages in seven days. That gives the timestamps, why it works. Now these aren't perfect. I just wanted to run this prompt just to see what it, it would come up with. But what I really wanted to show you most importantly is its thought process right here that O3 mini is using that we have not seen previously from OpenAI in an O1, in a GPT 4.0 or all the other models that it has at its disposal. But you guys can use this even if you're free users of ChatGPT. All you need to do again, if I pull up that free account, is click the reason option and then you can prompt away using O3 Mini. But it is still a major update. Now, the final OpenAI update I want to cover in this video is they just announced that ChatGPT search is available to everyone. This means free users of ChatGPT. And guess what? No signup is even required to use this. So if I pull up my free plan of ChatGPT, here is the search button right next to reason like I just showed you earlier. And if I click search, we now have the full capabilities that we only had on the paid versions previously. So here it shows you what's trending. If I click MBA trades today, if you've never used ChatGPT search, this is now your opportunity to do so. I do like using this sometimes when I'm trying to get maybe AI news today or other news related queries. So right here, I like the results. It even you know gives you the sources to each one. I could follow up if I wanna do that. You can link off to all these different websites. So that's really cool. And really what this is showing me is that OpenAI is basically making all of these advanced features more accessible to even free users. We now have search GPT. We now have that think option. So you can use O3 mini, which is a reasoning model on the free plan of chat GPT. So again, DeepSeek really did shake up the AI industry. They exposed OpenAI, in my opinion, and I'm glad that happened because if DeepSeek would have never came in and announced 
R1 and its advanced reasoning model for free, I highly doubt we would be getting these major updates from OpenAI as soon as they're releasing them. So hopefully another player comes in and shakes things up even more. It's only going to benefit the end users like you and me. So now I want to hear what you guys have to say about these recent OpenAI updates. Are you a fan of O3 Mini? Do you think Deep Research is a cool update? Are you using the search functionality if you're a free user of ChatGPT? I just want to hear all of your different thoughts in the comments below. And if you've made it this far into the video, I truly appreciate you. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you appreciate me putting in the time to make videos just like this. But most importantly, I hope you all have a great day.